and we're back guys tennis in a minute i'm your host good energy i hope everyone's having a great weekend so far and it should get even better as we have the two best ladies in this tournament of wimbledon 2023 there will be a new first time grand slam champion will it be on Shibor or marketa von Drusova? now these two ladies have played six times that's a lot yes now overall i feel the matchmakers have been doing an amazing job of putting together first matchups right opponents that have never played before but it just so has it that the two best ladies in this tournament have played six times. And of course we have An Shibor and Marquetta who was unseated. Marquetta is actually the first unseated player to come through and make the championship here in the open era. Unbelievable, that's amazing. Dreams come true, you know, that's like Emma Raducanu type of stuff there. Now, but listen, they've played six times, and we're going to start first with Marquetta. Marquetta is from the Czech Republic, and I told you guys, don't be surprised if a Czech Republican player goes all the way. And Marquetta, to start this tournament, was a 25,000 to 1 underdog to win it. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, she's not a good grass player, right? But if you took... If you took my advice and just put $10 on all the Czech Republic players, just $10 on each of them, then you could potentially have the opportunity to win $1,300 right now. Unbelievable. So, Marketa Von Drusova, guys. 30 and 10 on the season. She's 8 and 1 on grass. Now, she, she historically hasn't been a good grass player. If you take away what she's done on grass this season guys she's she's literally like five and eleven right so she's not a good grass player and she said it herself in the uh post-match interview a couple days ago she said if you told me this would happen on hard or clay i would believe you but not on grass but listen dreams do come true marketa amazing job she took out Peyton Stearns in the first round straight set victory Kuna Matova in the second round straight set victory Donna Vekic good good wins guys she's been good competition I do feel Donna was tired she took out Marie Buskova a fellow country woman in the round of 16 Jessica Pegula who had a chance to win that match up 4-1 that's heartbreaking uh, but that was a numeric lock and she took out Svitolina uh, in the semifinal who I, look, the magic just ran out. Svitolina, she just didn't have an answer for, for Marquetta. Now, Marquetta's left-handed, and a lot of people aren't familiar with her, but she's been injured. She's had multiple wrist injuries, and she, she didn't even think she would play again, right? Um, the year she won the silver medal at the Tokyo Games 2021, she won 32 matches that year. And I really thought if she would have stayed healthy, I, I thought she peaked at the Olympic Games. I just thought she was playing so well. Her her left forehand down the line, it's that's tough. I mean, for the most part, for left-handed players, that left forehand down the line, it's, it's unreturnable when they're on. And we're going to see if she can do something today against Anjabor with that left forehand down the line. They played three times um, earlier part of their career. Von Trusova literally was a little behind on Jabor, you know, being the older woman, you know, f five years older, had the advantage. But the last couple of matches at the Indian Wells, Von Trusova won that 7-6, six, 6-4, six, and she beat her at the Australian Open. Um, it went three sets, but as I said before, Anz hasn't been healthy. She definitely wasn't 100% at the Indian Wells. And not even at the Australian Open. She looked a little rusty, started off slow. I think Tamara in the first round kind of pushed her a little bit. And, you know, we're going to see if Marquetta can can do it again. Now, Marquetta, her numbers are pretty good. She's, she's a solid player. Uh, she's very unconventional. And she's the type of player that I think she just, 
she's just so skilled and talented she's just got she has that on Shabor type of swag now she wins 73 percent of her service games which is pretty good that's a solid number uh, she's winning 42 percent of her return games she gets 66 percent of her first serves in play um, she does make a lot of double faults though so keep that in mind because uh, she's not a good server and a lot of that i think is you have to take a look at her being so short she's only five six and i've, I've seen her you know in person uh she's she's short and, and anjabor is short too but historically the taller players have been the better servers uh marquetta she averages about just under four double faults a match that's a lot that's a high number and she cannot afford to do that here against Anjabor. Uh, she saves about 56% of her break points when she's pressured and she breaks opponents at about 45%. And we know this is her second best appearance uh, at a slam. She made the um, French Open final in 2019. So this would be her second best appearance uh, as a for a slam during her career. This would be her second slam final appearance. And um, she, she's made the Australian Open round of 16. She made that a couple of years ago, and she made the U.S. Open round of 16 um, quite a few years ago. But I mean, the million dollar question is, can she be on Shabor for the most important title of her career, right? Uh, Wimbledon, very historic tournament. And let's just be honest, every player dreams to win Wimbledon. It's just... It's grass, it's the original surface. Now, Marquetta, she wins about 73% of her service games, which is re really good. You know, all the elite players are in the 70 percentile range. She wins about 42% of her return games. That's a solid number. She's getting 66% of her first balls in play. Uh, but she makes a lot of double faults. She makes just under four double faults a match, and she cannot give on Shabor a free service game with four double faults. That's the only thing that concerns me with Marquetta is when her serve is off, it's off. And she will get down on herself. And that's one thing she's going to have to control in this match. She's going to have to control what she can control and forget about any bad plays, unforced errors, double faults. She's got to put it behind her because once she goes downhill, that's it. The match is going to be over. Uh, but Marquetta... She does break opponents at a decent percent when they're pressured, 45%. She saves 58%, just under, closer to 57% of her own break points when she's pressured. Uh, I do feel in pressure point situations, uh, that could be an issue facing Ans. Because if she's double faulting, she's, she gets really hard on herself. Where I think with Ans, you can tell the mental work. She has a mental coach now. Uh, I'm not sure if Marquetta does. Uh, I want to say she does not but you can tell the mental work that Anz has been putting in because she's a lot more positive Anz, you know back in the day would, would would kick the ball you know she would slam a racket and she would do some of those crazy things too but she's so sweet off the court that people love her and of course with Anz Jabor I mean she's done well at all of the Grand Slams and of course last year being a huge year making the final here as well as the US Open and she's made the Australian Open quarterfinal and the French Open quarterfinal as well so uh, Anz she plays good on every surface let's just be honest with you uh, but this is going to be a tough matchup whenever someone has beat you twice in a year mentally that's there's that thought in the back of your mind like oh this person's pretty good right and of course we know Marquette is really good um, but Anz has stated several times this tournament, which I thought was kind of bizarre, that this is her revenge tour. And look, so far, it's going pretty well. I always pay attention to the players that are beating the slam champions, right? Because those are the, the players that have the confidence. Bianca, Kvitova, Rabikina, Sabalenka. She has taken out four Grand Slam champions in a row. If you can do that, you can definitely beat Marquetta, right? Anjabor, guys. Injury-prone season. We know that. She's got 22 wins. A lot of the elite stars are in their 30s, right? But Anz, I did a survey before Wimbledon started. Uh, what is Anjabor's win percentage on grass? That's right, guys. 
over 74%. She wins her matches on grass. I had one subscriber say that Anz wasn't a good grass player. I'm like, you, you have to be trolling. This this has got to be a robot here because the reality here is Anz has one of the best win percentages of all current players right now on tour when it comes to grass. She's amazing on grass, right? And I feel a lot of her shot making. Her shot making ability makes up for any type of lack in athletic ability that may not be there, right? Just her different variety of shots and situations just literally put opponents on the defensive end and it gives her the offensive advantage. Anjabor is highly skilled and I've been saying this for a long time. I think people are finally realizing that she can literally hit shot of the year in every match she plays. And I've watched her practice. She practices all angles of the court. Her ball and her racket, she is literally practicing shots. So she is an amazing shot maker. That doesn't happen by chance, doesn't happen by luck. When you make the shots that Anz makes, you are really skilled with that racket. Now, this is a matchup here where I think Marquetta's, she's going to have her moments. She's that good. She's that skilled. And Anz, she's been injured, so her numbers are they're a little bit misleading, right? Anz is only winning 66% of her service games, 42% of her return games. She is still returning good. She's getting 69% of her first balls in play. Breaking opponents at 50% amazing, saving 53% of her own break points. In terms of double faults, Anz is also making quite a bit of double faults, to be honest with you. Uh, Anz is making not nearly as many as Marquetta, but she's still making a little bit over two and a half double faults per match. And of course, you know, there's no half in this championship. So yeah, she might get three double faults in this match. But the reality here is I think Anz Jabor and Marquetta, I think they're going to put on a show. They're just highly skilled. And the best pick in this match, it's going to be an even return pick. I think Anz is overvalued, to be honest with you. Uh, I really hope she wins the match. Of course, I want her to win, uh, but I think this should be a pick em. Uh, The best pick for you guys in this match, take this match to go under 103 minutes. That's right, under. Now, I've given this pick out in the past before. It's won every single time. I've given this pick out on four occasions. It's four for four, okay? The last time I gave it out with Novak in the championship, this, the, the number hit with exactly one minute left. That's right, that's how scary this number is. It's a scary number, right? It's, you're, you're timing a match here. Scary, I know, because anything can happen. But it's going to be fun because both of these players, they play very quick. Uh, I don't think both of these uh, players are coming in here to have long rallies. They're coming in here to really do what they need to do to get the job done. And in terms of this matchup, I think Marquetta will have her best chance at victory by playing more vertically, right? Her forehand down the line, drop shots, slices. In terms of Anz, I think she's Anz is going to have her best chance to win this match by playing wide. I think Anz has the much better cross-court winners. I think she's got the better angles overall. And I think that's that's going to be Anz's path to victory. I don't think she wants to get into, you know, a shot a shot match vertically with Marquetta. I think Marquetta's just as good as Anz is when it comes to redirecting, changing pace and uh, mixing it up. But I do think when it comes to stretching the court and hitting those angles in the corners, mid court, cross court, doesn't matter which spot you're on. When it comes to the horizontal play, I think Anz is a much better player and, and it's night and day. You know, Anz is by far the best shot maker. If she plays vertically, I think that will give Marquetta chances to win points. And I think that's what Anz should definitely stay away from. Uh, she doesn't want to get into a slice match, a short ball match with Marquetta because I think Marquetta's athletic ability is very underrated, and especially coming from the opposite end, she's going to win some of those exchanges. So Anz, in simple, 
Uh, try to baseline as much as you want. If you do get short balls, uh, do exactly what you did with uh, Sabalenka and Petra. Give her those wide returns on those short balls because Anz is such a good shot maker. And she's athletic. She's moving the best on grass. I think that's underrated um, because a lot of people don't really consider her footwork as elite, but her footwork is top notch. However, playing someone five years younger that's explosive like Marquetta, who just burst vertically, uh, I think Anz should stay away from too many short balls against Marquetta. But that's the pick, guys. I gave it to you. Enjoy. Um, I'm going to get ready for the match here. Get a little bit of rest. I'll be back up to watch it. Tennis in a minute. Thank you guys for all the love and support. Uh, 2.8 million, guys. We did we did a million in, um, what, a month? A month? Um, a month and a half? That's amazing. So thank you for the love and support. I think all you guys, that just, just and simple, everyone's showing love. I appreciate it. And we will see you back in a minute. Enjoy the match.